Hello and welcome to another video for the Dwarven Tavern for the series The Beginner Videos. Um, I am Lyric and today we are going to be discussing something I like to call the half 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 characters. Now what that is is uh, characters that um, a lot of new gamers tend to gravitate toward and that uh, they don't really comprehend. So I'm going to be discussing the pros and cons of the half 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 characters. For example, if you were a half centaur, half dragon, half I don't know, satyr, half lilin, like all of these things um, combined to make this most unique character that you can possibly come up with. I'm going to be discussing the pros and cons, not of that one specifically, because that one has a lot to it, but um, I'm going to be discussing the pros and cons of what it's like to roll up a half, half, half character. And I hopefully, I mean, I hope <laughs> that this video will come in handy for you new gamers who are really curious about rolling up a character that is, I don't know, a, a lichen cat demon or something like that. Um, so uh, please use this video if you're curious about what it would be like to roll up a character that has all these individual um, parts of their ancestry, <laughs> or if you're an experienced gamer who has always been curious about it but too afraid to do it. So, um, let's get started, shall we? Uh, I'll start with the pros because everyone likes the good news. So, pros are pretty obvious. Pros include, for example, bonuses. Um, let's use the half work. Um, a half work uses the strength of the human, uh, or not the human, but the strength as the orc. I was thinking the intelligence. Um, oh, obviously I am a half, if I were a half orc, I obviously has that intelligence too. But anyway, um, a half orc has the strength bonus of an orc. So, like, they, they tend to, even if they take after the human side more, uh, they tend to have more strength. They tend to have um, a, a stronger body because of their half orc heritage. No matter if they take after their human side more, they always have that excess bonus. Um, just like they have that the uh, unfortunate negative two for their intelligence because um, half orcs or orcs specifically are known to be less intelligent than humans. So. Um, I mean, that's a pros and cons topic, but basically what I'm trying to get at here is that uh, your character, if it is a half this, half that, um, they tend to reap the benefits of both races. They tend to have the benefits of that race or this race, and it, it kind of... It's just kind of a gestalt character all on its own. It's a, a conglomerate of all the, the benefits. That being said, it's also a conglomerate of all the, you know, the disadvantages, um, such as the negative two to the intelligence. So, uh, it's kind of a, a give and take for that. Um, but, I mean, you can have, like, okay, for a half-elf, um, elves are naturally immune to sleep spells and stuff like that. So a half-elf, even though they have their human side and they do sleep, um, a half elf is still very much immune to sleep spells. So, um, I mean, that's kind of a win-win there. Like, you get to slumber, but you also don't have to slumber <laughs> when it's cast upon you. Um, and, and, and another thing that um, comes into benefit, like, okay, for example, um, I have my monster manual opened in front of me. One of the monsters that is just laying here in front of me is a Liland. And uh, a Liland has, uh, I don't know, let's see, ooh, she's got a strength of 20. So you would have a plus 5 for your ability. So you would probably have, let's see, if it's a, a 20 is the natural strength of a Liland, so you'd probably get another plus 2 if you were half Liland. However, you probably have um, a, an intelligence a lot lower than you want because their intelligence are only 14. And... Well, I mean, if you're going off of the average stats of a human, which is, I mean, they have a natural intelligence of, I believe it's either 8 or 10. It's one of those two numbers. So, uh, like, all of the, the 
bonuses of the Liland is advanced. So, but just going off of all of her stats, um, like her strength is 20, dex is 17. Uh, her intelligence is the lowest, so you probably get a, a negative for that. Um, however, you do get these really cool, beautiful wings and a harp and a dagger. So, I mean, what's the trade-off there? Um, another thing that um, you can benefit from by creating a half, 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 half character is it's not just a way for you to be... Oh, bless you. Sorry, Tavernier Max is in the room and he's being very clingy right now. Um, but another reason to have a half, 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 half character is um, it lets you... I mean, this is this is probably the mo the biggest reason that people want to create these type of characters in the first place, and that is to create an individual, to make a unique character that stands out among the rest, who is um, gallant and strong, and you know, fast and smart and charismatic and blah blah blah. Like they want to create a character that is above the rest, and I think that's kind of, you know, the mindset that most gamers have is that they want to create someone that stands out. A lot of people choose like the Galleon Paladin who fights for good even if it means putting his teammates in danger. And then there are the ones who create these hybrid characters that really don't make sense physically. So, um, it really just depends on your personality. I myself like to create characters that go against my own personality. Um, but that's another challenge to myself, and that's another video all on its own. So, uh, sometimes people want to create the half, 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 half characters to be an individual. And that's okay. That makes sense. I mean, it's a realm of fantasy, so why on earth wouldn't this type of stuff happen? I mean, other than if you're, you know, setting on the mindset of these characters, like, a Lillian is extra planner, so pretty sure I'm not pronouncing that word right. Um, extra planar, planar, whatever. They are from different lands than we are. So uh, it really wouldn't make sense that they would come and breed. I mean, it doesn't even look like they have the capabilities to make offspring with a humanoid person as they have a lower half of a snake. So it is very difficult. I mean, it can work, but it is very difficult to have some of these creatures, such as a centaur, uh, mate with something else to create a half whatever without it being some sort of doppelganger. So it is, it's very hard to make it work, but it can, and when it does, it can be epic. Um, Tavernier Lindsay actually had a, a half centaur, half dragon character, and it's, it's re reoccurring in my mind, so I keep wanting to bring it up, uh, as an example. And he had a, like one of the, the cons that I'm going to get to is the technical BS, um, like all the, the cons, the, the negatives and the, the uh, disadvantages when it comes to like the paperwork. Uh, he had a, uh, a challenge rating, a, a uh, level rate of five. So he, every time someone else would level up five levels, he would only level up once. So, um, but other than that, he was super useful. Like, he had flight, he had dragon breath, and he had his four hooves that he stomped one orc per hoof when we were being attacked uh, near the sea. So, like, there's so much <laughs> that you can benefit from when it comes to these half-half-half characters. You know, the problem is, is that the, ha the benefits of these characters, the benefits of the hybrids, is usually what the the newbies, what the the new people that come to gaming, the, the new gamers, that's all they look at is the the benefits uh, of these characters. So, um, that being said, I'm going with the individuality of these hybrid characters is it lets you have some sort of creative outlet. Um, for more experienced gamers, if you're used to playing like a Dwarven Fighter or a an Elven Paladin or say a Half Orc Monk like myself, if you are you know tired of playing um, like the most extreme that you've ever played is like a Half Troll, ooh, 
ooh, that's getting out there. No, like if if you want to have like this the most bizarre campaign that you could possibly have, or you know the most uh, interesting, the most funny campaign that you could possibly have, then maybe a half 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 character should be rolled up just to see if it can be played and if it you know makes sense and what their personality is like and what do they stand for. Um, so like it, it's something that your mind can play with and I would suggest it for a non-serious campaign like if you're in a campaign where you have to find the orphan children and you have to do this and that and eventually you're sainted and blah 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 then you probably want to take a more serious approach to that game but if all you're doing is bar hopping and killing whatever moves then create a half 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 character and see just where that campaign may take you. I mean, that could be your next same character. So, um, that's the pros. Let's tackle the cons. Um, these are the stuff, this, this is the stuff that new gamers tend to not only forget about, but also might not even know about. Um, this is stuff that, that new characters, um, I mean, it's the reason why experienced gamers tend to avoid creating these type of characters, because they know what type of work it's put into them. Um, first of all, the technical rules and just all the BS that goes into rolling up a character can completely ruin the, the interest in the half-half-half characters. Having to wait five levels to level up once, or excuse me, or like you have a negative seven to this or a negative five to that. Like it's, it's a toss up from the good and the bad. And sometimes the bad wins and it makes the character not really salvageable. And not only that, but around the table, if you're the only one that sticks out as a different character, then you're almost overpowered compared to your other characters. So at this point, it's really time to look at the campaign as a whole and see if your character is putting your friends out and if, ooh, lightning in the room. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, they're uh, working on the, uh, the lighting. Uh, oh, hi, Max. It's Tavernier Maximilian. And these overpowered characters might be overshadowing the players around you. And when that happens, uh, it leads into my second point in that these characters actually become very hard to manage. Um, the leveling up every fifth level, or the negative seven to intelligence, or the inability to fit into a cave when it's a dungeon crawl. I mean, these things, they come into play very frequently. I'm spitting everywhere and I apologize for that, but it's... If you're, okay, it's hard for even an experienced gamer, let me just put it that way. Um, when you understand the campaign, and when you understand where it's going to go, that's one thing. But if you have no idea what you're getting yourself into, I highly recommend that you do not start with a half, half, half character. One of my friends when I was growing up actually wanted to play, I think it was a half dragon, half human and or like a, a pit fiend or something like that it was like half pit fiend some ludicrous character that she wanted to come up with because she was this dark brooding person um and her brother her older brother came and joined us in the campaign he encouraged this creativity because it was the only way that she would play D D with us at that point don't try to force it <laughs> don't try to make sure that your character don't, your player, your friend who's just like, I don't want to play unless I get to be super strange or super overpowered. At that point, it's like there's there's no real points. There's no, like, you want to be on the same level. And it's hard to, especially for me as a new DM at that point, it was very hard for me to overcompensate, <laughs> or compensate rather, for her overcompensation. So... Um, like we only played one one campaign and it was probably one of the worst campaigns I've ever been in um, mostly because it was just like it was it was awful <laughs> trying to deal with that half character um, and her her abilities and like she was a new player so she had a mindset of a new player yet her character was that of one who had of a player who has been playing for decades so um, 
like I said, if you are a new player, please, for the love of God, avoid half, half, half characters. Um, at least ones that are in a series campaign. If you're new to character, I suggest starting out with one of the generic characters in the, the lineup of the player's handbook. Um, and uh, try to go from there. And if that doesn't work, um, just explore. You can explore the monster manual and, you know, talk with your DM about it and ask if, you know, this is okay. Like, if you want to play a kobold, um, well, maybe your DM can come up with a, uh, a system for you so that you can play a kobold. But don't make it like a, a kobold invisible stalker or something like that. I don't even want to know how that happens. So, um, and then another, another con to this is that, uh, it's really surprisingly overdone. A lot, a lot of new players wants to play the the one that stands out, the one that is a a creature of the night that's this mutant deformity and they're they have a dark past and they're just oh what do I do? I'm this player, I'm a character who don't know my parents and my grandparents because they're all from different races. Um, like, I believe it or not, pretty much everyone that I have introduced D&D to, which is a lot of people, at least two dozen people uh, in the past five years, uh, they all want to play this type of character. They want to play a character that is strange, dark, mysterious, brooding, and they want that mystique to it, and I totally get it. Do not get me wrong on this one. I love characters that have a dark past that needs solved or that are, you know, dark and mysterious. I mean, I love Batman. Come on, let's be real here. Um, but this character is so overplayed that it would be almost more individualistic, more unique if you played the most generic character ever. If you played an, an elven ranger who is an elf who, you know, has lived for 500 years and they want to uh, destroy all orcs ever, that's probably, I mean, it sounds as generic as shit, but it's probably more unique now um, that, you know, now that everybody's getting into D&D for the first time and it's been around for so long that people can create these strange concoctions of monsters and players, uh, or characters rather. Um, <laughs> and uh, sometimes I would almost suggest rolling up a generic character just so that you get the grasp of the game. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is um, the underlying point of this entire video <laughs> is Make sure you roll up a character, if it is your first time gaming, uh, make sure you roll up a character that is not this hybrid monstrosity of a character because it's going to not only overwhelm your DM and the players around you, but it's going to kill you. It, like Keeping up with these characters is sometimes not as easy as it looks, and it doesn't even look easy half the time. So. If you're a new character, avoid the half-half-half characters. Try starting out with a, a breed that's already in-game, such as the half-orc or the half-elf, um, and learn, understand the mindset of a character who goes through that. Like, um, my half-orc, I actually have a half-orc, half-elf, um, and his name is Akathan, and he is my favorite character. He's a monk. I don't actually let that part out a lot. Um, he is a half-elf, um, and he is one of the few stories where his parents were actually in love. I mean, that was kind of a Stockholm Syndrome situation, but, uh, I mean, there was not much you could do in that situation. <laughs> it's a long story. Um, so, I mean, his parents both died when he was still a babe, but, um, like, his father didn't even live to long enough to see her third trimester, but... Um, it was still a love story that was much like Romeo and Juliet. Um, as cliche as that is, he was actually one of my most individual characters. I swear to God, Max, why do you want to be in this video so bad? Come on, get off the table. So, uh, but at the, at the same time, he was a character that I had uh, rolled up when I had been playing for years. So, 
uh, I highly recommend new players do not tackle the half-half-half characters until you have at least a good understanding of the basics of D&D &D or Pathfinder or whatever game system you're using. Um, so, um, and if you are an experienced gamer and you've avoided the half-half-half characters, maybe, you know, you can try giving it, you know, a little taste every now and then, like my half-orc, half-elf. Um, I mean, it doesn't really make sense when you think of the mindsets of the two races, but in a situation such as the one that my half-elf, half-orc parents were in, um, let me just <laughs> explain this a little bit, just so you have the context. Um, my half-elf, or my half- my elf was actually an elven princess. She was um, the emperor's daughter, one of the three that were captured by um, an orc army. And it was kind of like the Mongols coming in and, cap and invading China. And um, like he was based off of a Mongolian warrior and she was based off of a princess. Um, not really necessarily in the same time zone. Um, it is a fantasy world, so let me have my fun. Um, and um, he was he was uh, her protector. He was basically the one that was supposed to watch her while the emperor and the two elder sisters were being interrogated, and um, the two elder brothers were being interrogated. And uh, like he was the one that was to watch over her room to make sure that she didn't escape. Well, after this, after months of this, surprisingly, the orcs were incredible negotiators. And after months of this, they started to develop feelings for one another um, because they were, you know, the only contact they had was with each other. And um, they began to understand one another in the situations that where they were in. And finally, when it came time for her to be beheaded um, so that they could overthrow the entire system, because that's what orcs do, they like the chaos, um, he actually, you know, impregnated her. Um, you know, kind of earlier, because, you know, they were in love, but when it came time for her beheading, she was pregnant, and he didn't want her to die because he was in love with her, and they had a child on the way. Um, he actually helped her escape, and he died defending the walls that she was escaping over. And then um, monks in the mountains who saw no race, no, you know, individualness of these races, um, they took her in, and she actually died giving birth because it was a half orc baby in an elven body. So um, that's actually what happened with my half elf, half orc character. Even though a half elf and a half orc character doesn't sound like it should make sense at all, it really just depends on the situation. So experienced players, if you want to give it a try, I recommend it, but don't try to go too far unless it's, of course, some sort of satire campaign and you're just making it for the shits and giggles which you know I'm always you know happy to hear about this type of story so if you have a half 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 character that you love and enjoy and it's one of your first characters please comment below I'm interested to hear about it and of course I am always happy to hear about your thoughts and opinions about my beginner's rant so please comment below and let us know about your own personal experiences um, please visit us at www.dwarventavern.net for more information about videos and what we're doing and podcasts and stuff like that. But that ends this video. I really do appreciate you sticking around with me this long. Um, if you have, please like and subscribe and share. I mean, this video is, what, 20-some minutes long? So just, you know, it's right there. Just click it. Um, I do appreciate that. And uh, there will be more videos out coming soon. Uh, I hope to get them up as soon as possible, since that's my job. But anyway, um, on behalf of the entire cast and crew of the Dwarf and Tavern, I am Lyric, and we wish for you to want for nothing but adventure, and at first I feared it, then I charged. Thank you guys for always watching. We do appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.